what is the deal with safety at theme parks? And is it dangerous? Are you going to get hurt? We hear about these accidents and, oh my gosh, can I even go there safely? We hear a lot about accidents and incidents at theme parks uh, when a ride malfunctions or something like the train at Silver Dollar City when it derails. And Oh no, and you hear all these people saying, It's terrible, it's horrible, they don't take care of the rides, and they're falling apart, and you're going to get hurt, and blah, 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 blah. Lots of blah, blah, blahs. <laughs> Everybody's got an opinion. You'll find the vast majority of these people with an opinion, though, don't know anything about actually what goes on in the park. They've never worked at one. They look at outside and they make judgments based on what they see. And after all, the park looks run down. Um, guys, part of the theming for much of Silver Dollar City is it's supposed to look old? Let's talk about safety then at the parks. Not just Silver Dollar City, but also Disney, Bush, and many of the others. And what the reality is. You see, safety is actually a top priority at the parks. Above everything else, nothing comes before it. If you look at Disney's Keys to the Kingdom, which we refer to a lot, number one is safety. Safety always comes first. Silver Dollar City has a huge safety department that awards safety awards. The times that we would compromise being courteous and friendly to guests and theming is for safety. You know what? If you're about to get run over by a horse on Main Street, I don't care how it looks. I'm going to grab you and haul you out of the way. Just save your life, because you're being dumb. I'm going to yell at you not to cross a safety barrier and go into an enclosed area with a roller coaster or something. <laughs> That's just how it is. Safety is huge. There's a number of reasons for that. One, the parks don't want you to get hurt. They just don't. Not just for publicity reasons. I mean, they don't want all the news out there about how people got hurt at the park. Not just because of lawsuits, because if you get hurt at the park, you're going to try to sue and get free money. Especially if you're doing something to get yourself hurt on purpose to try to get free money. But yeah, that's a whole nother deal. They don't want it on their reputation. It's going to hurt their bottom line. It's going to hurt their money. If people hear that people are getting hurt at the park, they're not going to go. Look at Action Park in New Jersey. It's not there anymore because of the lawsuits and the reputation. And even though it hasn't been around in decades, it's still well known by a bad reputation. So they don't want you to get hurt. It just, it's too much hassle. It's too much paperwork. It's too much money. Bottom line, business-wise, it's not good for them. Not only that, but the parks actually care about the guests generally. Usually, you're usually a little bit more than just a business proposition for them. So they don't want to do that. The honest truth, too, when it comes to taking care of the parks, it costs more to repair and take care of something than it does to maintain it. So if they maintain something and keep it in good running condition, that usually costs less than it does to fix it later after it's broke. The truth is, any place that isn't putting money into safety and maintaining their stuff and taking care of it and safe operations isn't going to be around long. They're just not. If they're not focusing on that safety and keeping that line up, it's going to kill the company. Uh, we can look at several of them over the years. Action Park I mentioned, Schlitterbahn in Kansas City. When a company puts publicity and money over safety, it's going to kill them. Literally. You can see when a company starts to cut back on their safety budgets and their maintenance, not just on the rides, but you'll see it in other places in the park. Places that used to get painted regularly, not getting taken care of. Places that had light bulbs that are burned out. Roofs that are aging. Things that aren't being taken care of. And when you see buildings start to fall apart, well, okay, the building's falling apart. What else is falling apart? Because if they're not maintaining buildings, what are they doing on the rides? <laughs> they're still keeping them safe, but are they really taking care of them the way they should? And let me give an example of this on a recent trip to Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain is safe. Okay, let me get that across first. But you could tell that they had not been taking care of a lot of the infrastructure in the park, the buildings and other things, until recently. 
In the last year and a half, they have gone on a massive spree of fixing things, of painting things, of repairing things. And you can see the difference from my recent trip, the difference between Samurai Summit, where they haven't gotten to it yet, and places that they have and how good the park looks. And when they're investing in that, you know that they're also investing in taking care of the rides. So, yes, outward appearance does play a role. Make sure you're not looking at theming to look bad when it's actually not. Good theming, you can make something look like it's in terrible condition, which is actually brand new. And part of the reason I mention that is because if one area of maintenance and upkeep is ignored, it's often not the only area being ignored. And if they're cutting budgets on that, they're probably cutting budgets in other areas. And this is where I get a little concerned with some companies that have really been in a role of cutting budgets lately. And you start wondering, okay, what other budgets are you cutting? And I'm kind of referring to one specific major company that has gained a reputation for nickel and diming everybody and cutting stuff. So, But the truth is, safety is still number one. So let me talk about a couple things that I have seen people mention. Um, in regards to the recent incident at Silver Dollar City, I have seen a few people comment along the lines of, Well, you know, those mechanics are only getting paid minimum wage to fix the rides. Let me explain a couple things here. First off, the people who maintain the rides, the mechanics, the engineers at Silver Dollar City, they are not the ride operators. They are mechanics. They are a completely different class of employee, a completely different pay level. Yeah, that ride operator may be getting near minimum wage or a little bit above it, but that guy who's fixing the ride is not. He's getting paid much better because he has a much more advanced skill set. They've got to know those rides inside and out. They are trained not just with their mechanical expertise, but specifically on that ride to know how to take it apart, put it together, understand what could be wrong if something needs to be fixed. They know their stuff. They usually have a lot of different kinds of work experience. Uh, they may be electricians. They may be engineers. They may be uh, metal manufacturers. We had a guy at Silver Dollar City that could specifically make metal parts for the rides that needed them. Uh, they often have to make the parts inside the park for older rides. And those who are machinists and can make those parts are highly treasured. They get paid well because some of those rides need very unique parts. Some of those older rides need unique parts. And if those parts aren't available from the company that made it, because maybe it went out of business decades ago, or they're just not out there, you've got to make it yourself. Many parks have a machining shop where they can make what they need for the rides. And they do it well. They know their stuff because they don't want to compromise safety. So these guys that are working as mechanics on the rides, they're good. They are good. Part of their jobs don't include just fixing stuff. There's a daily inspection that goes on on every single ride at any park worth its stuff. And they get in and they crawl around and they inspect the wiring, they inspect the seats, the restraints. They walk over this whole entire ride with flashlights and crawling in and under and around. They look for stress fractures. They check to make sure all the bolts are tightened. There's actually a, a neat little trick that they do with this. Oftentimes, rather than have to go around with a wrench and tighten every single bolt, which takes forever, they can actually take a line and they will paint it on the bolt and I'll right around it. And so they can see if that bolt has loosened at all, those lines won't line up. They'll be off just a little bit. And then they know, hey, we got a loose nut, loose bolt. Let's take a closer look at this. They'll check for nails sticking out and loose boards and rodden boards. And uh, If it's the case of a roller coaster or a train, they walk the track and inspect it to make sure there's nothing loose, nothing moving, nothing sliding, nothing cracked. Yeah, even those big roller coasters with the loops up in the air, they crawl all over that track every day to make sure it's safe. It's a crazy job, but they do it to make sure there's not going to be a problem. After they have done all that inspection, then they do a test ride to make sure it's running correctly. And not only will the mechanics do a test run to make sure it's running correctly, then the ride operators come in and they will do one as well. But until both of them agree that, yep, it's running right, everything is safe, everything looks good, and they both sign off on it, 
it doesn't run. If there's any question at all, they won't operate it. They will check the safety restraints, seat belts, lap bars, shoulder bars, whatever it may be, and they will go over everything to make sure that ride is safe. Otherwise, it ain't going. Then they also have times where they regularly take the ride apart and inspect it and refurbish it uh, for parts that are seasonal, that they're open until like November and then open up again in March. Oftentimes, they will take rides completely apart at that point. And in that winter season, they take it all apart, they put it back together, they check everything, they replace anything that might be slightly worn, and go over the whole entire thing. Roller coasters, you can't just take the track down, <laughs> but they will take those trains that ride on them completely apart. And they will go over the whole track and all the mechanics and the brakes and everything with a fine-tooth comb and pull parts out and replace them. So many rides get an off-season complete refurbishment. If you're a year-round park, you can't exactly do that. So that's when you see parks like Disney that will close a ride for two weeks, a month, maybe a couple months, because that's what they're doing. They take everything apart that they can, check it all, replace parts, refurbish parts, and go over everything. All of that is to make sure that those rides are running smoothly, running correctly, running properly, and if you ever detect something that's not running right, it's shut down city. If it's a ride operator that they hear a weird noise on the train, if we heard something odd, we immediately would tell the engineer, hey, there's something not sounding right there. Shut down immediately until we figured out what it was that we were hearing. This is true on any ride. If you hear a noise, you see something that's not quite right, whatever it is, shut it down. Get a hold of the mechanics. Hey, there's something not right here. It needs to be checked. So here's a weird story for you along the lines. We had one ride operator at Silver Dollar City one time on one of the rides at Grand Expo. It just heard something weird. I don't know what that is. That's odd. What is that? Shut the ride down. The, in the mechanics came up and they took a look and they crawled all over. They could hear this, but they didn't know what it was. And so they wouldn't operate until they did. Turns out there was a stray kitten that had actually wandered into the park and crawled up in the ride. And it was barely mewing, but they heard it and shut it down and got this cat out of the ride. Yeah, weird stuff happens. <laughs> but that is just an example of a faint noise that they hear, but something's not right. Let's shut it down and make sure it's safe. And hey, you find some odd things sometimes. Safety is everybody's job. One of the hugest things you go through in your training to be a ride operator is safety and going through all the procedures of here's what you do and here's what you don't do and here's how you operate things, uh, even down to something that's called a lockout tagout. So one of the standard safety things that you will find at parks is a system to keep anybody that's out on the ride safe and keep that ride from operating. If you're going to be out in what we call the ride perimeter area, so on a coaster, if you're walking the track or inspecting that or something like that, you have a, a system where you actually have to take a lock and you lock the control panel closed so that ride cannot operate before you go out there and you take the key with you. So the only way that lock can come off is if it's cut, which it shouldn't be, or if you come back from doing your work and you unlock it. And you will see sometimes in the case of Rhino Rally, we had a system where if we had to go do an evacuation on the water or something like that, every single employee who went out there added a lock to this. So you would sometimes end up with six locks, keeping that thing locked out while everybody was out there doing their job. And until everybody had unlocked their lock, that ride could not operate. So invariably, when you see these situations where somebody was injured while they were inspecting a ride, invariably the lockout tagout procedure wasn't followed. They didn't lock the ride out. They didn't tell the people running the ride that they were out there. And so they did a test run or something and didn't know somebody was there. In pretty much every case, when you see something like that happen, it is a human error somewhere along the way. There are rare times when you do see a mechanical issue that's kind of what I expect to come out of Silver Dollar City's deal, is that something mechanical happened that couldn't be found. You have to wait and see. But mechanical failures are rare. Exceedingly rare. Um, and yes, they do make news when they happen. 
but the vast majority of incidents and injuries and stuff that happen at a park are what we would call user error or writer error. It's people doing something that they shouldn't. They're standing up on a ride that they shouldn't. They're putting their arms and legs out. They're sticking their head out somewhere. They're misbehaving. They're not staying in their seat. They're doing something. They didn't fasten their seatbelt. Something like that. 97% of injuries at the parks, I think is what the number is. It may even be higher, um, are because of something that that person did that was not safe. They jumped over a fence. They went into a secured area. They ran down the hill on a wet day. Every injury that I saw at Silver Dollar City, except one, was a result of that person doing something that they shouldn't. And the one was a fluke thing and it wasn't a serious injury. Otherwise, every injury I've seen, not just at Silver Dollar City, but at Disney in five years, at Bush Gardens in two years, Every single time I saw an injury except for one, it was a result of what that person had done that was not safe. And that's true pretty much across the board. Safety is job number one at the parks. You're far, far more likely to get injured walking to your car or driving to the park than you are in the park itself. So please realize when you see an incident... It's extremely unusual, it's weird, it's strange, it's not normal, and the parks aren't going to let that happen to you. Their job is to keep you safe while you're having fun, and they want to do that. So I hope that addresses and answers some of your questions and concerns about safety at the parks, let you know a little bit about how they do it and, and what they do to keep you safe. You are their job number one, to keep you safe and let you have fun and make sure nothing happens, and they're going to do everything they can to do that. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments. Have you seen something strange? Have you seen one of those rare mechanical instances? I'd love to know it. Have you seen somebody do something dumb and get hurt? Tell me that in the comments too. Be sure to check the description. There's a ton of info there, including information on how to support me on Patreon. If you want to know more and the perks that come with it, check that. There's fan pages and all sorts of stuff. Thank you too to my patrons and my financial supporters. I couldn't do this without you. And thank you so much for watching. God bless. So we hear a lot about... Don't start with so. The truth is, any place that is putting money... I saw in the recent incident at Silver Dollar City, I've seen several people mention, well, the mechanics are just paid minimum wage. I have seen several people mention, in regards to the most... Hmm. And it's probably... Well. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to know about my merchandise and fan pages more, be sure to check the description below. If you'd like to know whenever I've got a new video posted up, make sure you hit that button right up there and subscribe. If you want to see another of my videos right now, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people here and support me financially on Patreon, well, make sure you, you check that link right there. There's all sorts of perks and benefits. Thank you so much and God bless.